Okay, so, this is in continuation to the uh, previous lecture uh, water technologies in medieval India part 1. So, here in this lecture we are going to focus mainly on the water lifting uh, devices that were prevalent in uh, North India uh, during both the Sultanate and uh, the Mughal rule. Now, uh, the very interesting question is that uh, are these uh, technologies uh, or were these technologies indigenous or uh, where they uh, I mean did they enter India from other parts of the world more specifically you know central Asia um, uh, in this particular context. So, this is a question that we are going to uh, address in this particular uh, presentation and uh, now to begin with uh, like there is a fascinating book uh, called uh, Islamic technology and illustrated history uh, uh, by Al Hassan and Donald Hill. So, Al Hassan and Donald Hill uh, they mention that this supply of water irrigation, drinking, domestic and industrial and agriculture purposes and this is very important has always been a vital consideration in Muslim lands. And of course, this is important because if you uh, uh, you know if you try to think the areas where the where there was Islamic uh, or uh, conquest. So, the areas which were conquered by the uh, Muslims. So, those areas to a great extent uh, those were arid. Okay. So, uh, how to tap water, how to uh, you know collect water, how to conserve water, how to lift water, how to store water for agricultural purposes, for irrigation, for drinking that was uh, very important uh, that was a very uh, significant uh, consideration for these uh, Muslim rulers or for the Muslims for that matter. So, uh, yes as I had mentioned that you know uh, if you see the map you will find that you know these areas were inhabited uh, by the uh, Muslims and uh, so Baghdad, Istanbul, Persia all deserts and uh, you know arid regions where water was not available in plenty. So, how to tap water from uh, these areas uh, which were to an extent water scarce. So, uh, you know we also get to know about different interesting hydraulic technologies in the Mediterranean specifically Spain because Spain was under Muslim conquest for a, a long period of time. Uh, and we find out from this particular book by Hassan and Hill that hydraulic technologies in the Mediterranean have reaped wonderful rewards. So, the Muslims were successful you know in tapping water, in using water, storing water, conserving water for the very various uh, purposes. So, so wonderful rewards what were these wonderful rewards productive fields, beautiful gardens, sparkling fountains and populous cities. So, these cities uh, in spite of being water scarce the way water was managed, the way water was you know used and stored uh, that uh, never affected the population uh, or the population density of these cities. Yes, so now uh, we come to the various water lifting uh, devices to, to, to start with uh, uh, the Noria. So, the Noria uh, is a machine which is activated by water power. So, it is itself activated by uh, water power and it uses the energy derived from the flow of a river. So, the Noria is never activated or the Noria uh, uh, it actually uh, does not work on a standing water body for example, a well or something like that, but it always derives energy from the flow of a river. So, it has to work on it has to get activated on a flowing water. So, we will elaborate that when we will be talking about another uh, um, uh, otherwise similar water lifting device called Sakya. So, there is a subtle difference between Noria and Sakya and uh, there is a confusion because uh, in some accounts uh, we find that you know uh, this uh, the, they use uh, uh, there is over there is an overlap uh, in the use of Noria and Sakya, but these two devices are not the same though they appear uh, very similar and though they have very similar uh, characteristics and uh, attributes, but yet there are some fundamental differences between Noria and Sakya which we need to be aware of. So, one uh, fundamental difference is that the uh, Sakya it, uh, it always it is uh, uh, used on a well, but a Noria it is uh, used uh, on a river. So, it derives uh, energy from the flow of a river. Uh, so, it consists of a large very narrow undershot water wheel. So, you can see the Noria here and uh, it is used for lifting water into a small aqueduct. Now, there is again uh, a controversy or a debate uh, regarding like whether uh, this had been this particular technology had been derived from the classical Hellenistic world uh, with further improvisation 
uh, by the mm, you know by the Islamic or the Muslim engineers or whether you know it has been devised and designed and developed by the Muslim engineers themselves. So, uh, there are some works on this uh, the most significant being the works uh, by uh, Olesan. So, Olesan has worked a lot on the mechanical water lifting uh, devices and Olesan has worked on water lifting devices in uh, the, Romanist, the Roman and the Hellenistic empire and also uh, you know uh, across different other empires as well. Uh, and uh, Olesan says that you know uh, there is a high possibility that uh, though the Noria was uh, prevalent before uh, uh, you know I mean uh, though the Noria was not designed by the uh, Muslim engineers, but the Muslim engineers they had fundamental role to uh, play in the improvisation uh, of Noria in making it more effective in making it uh, more uh, you know meaningful. So, um, Kitab al Havi this uh, text it mentions uh, the use of extensive use of noria in Iraq and uh, not only small norias, but uh, large norias uh, also existed and uh, you know very large norias uh, even which could lift 153000 liters of water per hour. So, which is roughly 2550 liters of uh, water per minute. So, uh, this was the I mean this was the device though it looks very simple and small, but it is extremely powerful. Yeah, so coming to Sakia. So, I mentioned that the Sakia and Noria they are often uh, confused with each other and some people think that you know the Sakia, Sakia and Noria are similar because if you see the picture. So, this is the Sakia and uh, this is the Noria. So, almost you know this uh, water pots, these pots where water uh, you know is collected from the river or from a well, these are quite similar. So, these pots look identical. In Sakia also, in Sakia also we have the similar uh, pots similar pots, but there are uh, some fundamental differences as I mentioned uh, previously between uh, Noria and Sakia. Yeah. So, Sakia uh, it is said that the mention of Sakia uh, is also there in uh, Panchotantra, but Panchotantra uh, does not use the word Sakia, it uses the word Aragatta. So, what is ara ghatta? So, ara it means pity wheel or spoked wheel and ghatta means pot. So, again the similar kind of you know functioning, but uh, then uh, it is uh, argued uh, and it is shown by historians of uh, technology uh, and science uh, that uh, the Islamic engineers they had made lot of you know uh, improvisation, they had, uh, they had added whole lot of things uh, to the Noria. So, there are references of intricate and very sophisticated uh, Sakyas sorry I mentioned Noria uh, just now it is not Noria it's, we are talking about Sakya. So, uh, so, it is argued by the historians of science and technology that uh, though you know uh, may be uh, some form of Sakya was there uh, before uh, the uh, before uh, it was devised by the Muslim uh, engineers, but then they added whole lot of features to it. So, uh, we get to know about use of complex Sakyas and here the Muslim inventors and engineers really played a crucial role and uh, you get a detailed coverage of this uh, in that particular book or in the works of Hill, Donald Hill. And uh, so, he talks about the use of complex Sakyas which even consisted of 200 separate components. And these uh, complex Sakyas were of course, invented and devised by the Muslim inventors. So, we get to know about Al Zazari, this is the uh, device which Al Zazari uh, designed. So, he constructed, he came up with uh, the design of uh, a Sakya, uh, which could be simultaneously animal and water driven.
So, yes, this is the uh, this is this is a Sakya, a typical Sakya, and yes, as I was mentioning about the difference between Noria and Sakya. So Noria, uh, uh, the first difference is that Noria, uh, it is it always gets activated in a river, a flowing water. It needs flowing water to get activated. On the other hand, Sakya, uh, it it is it it's mainly operational on the uh, standing water bodies, uh, specifically the Veds. So this is one difference. The second difference is uh, Noria is uh, always water driven, but Sakya it is mainly animal driven. So, we get to know uh, or we get the mention of uh, different animals like uh, ox or mule or here you know uh, we see the uh, picture of a camel uh, used in lifting water uh, from a well through the use of Sakya. So, the um, animal uh, will turn the horizontal uh, you know horizontal wheel which is engaged to the vertical wheel and in that particular uh, particular way the entire device would function. So, this was uh, this was how the Noria used to work and very interestingly it is still operational in uh, some of the villages uh, in the northwest uh, province. For example, now we will uh, see an interesting uh, video which shows that how uh, the Noria is uh, still under much use in a particular uh, village uh, 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 in uh, Pakistan, uh, which is uh, you know uh, in, in Punjab more specifically uh, Punjab, Pakistan. So, there we will see how uh, um, the Sakya uh, is still functioning uh, in that village. So, let us watch the video. Most probably save historical places of Pakistan, save Gurdwaras and temples of Pakistan, culture and heritage of Pakistan, Punjabi culture and heritage of Pakistan. Heritage photographers and photography, the mom pages in Lagi Ajna Ponchama, Northwest Peak, SA area, which is general, Bohozada Sari Logan, Yada Judia, Onyas, especially Thapur Sab or Subash Dorbra Sab, Judeke Pindi gave the belong Gardesan, Utheta culture and heritage the Kanvaste, Ajna Ponchama, Fate Jangto. Pindi gave the Dermian to Durnal, Durnal to Takriban seventeen KM the first lady of the easterly side to see Samajlo, east southerly side of the Ponchama, Gandaka Spindrivich, Gandaka Spindrivich, Kukhas, Hasia Tabe, Kispindrivich, Ajvi culture and heritage, Anna Kriche, Kutusi Dekovet, Heran Hojoki, Persian wheel well, Jedake Ajto, Panji, so sar twenty five hundred years ago, Pray Tundasi. वो आज भी ऐसे ऑपरेट हो रहे हैं और सेम कंडीशन दे चुके वुडन बने हुए हैं नाल मिट्टी दे जड़े नहीं टिंडा ने और वो हलेतक मजूद ने बहुत ज़्यादा सारे लोग ने मनु किया कि तुसी ऐ कोई पुरानी पिक्चर 80s दी चुके लाती 90s दी चुके ला देती है मैं गलत काम नहीं करता मैं हमेशा रियल सोर्सेज होते हैं काम करना वहाँ प्राइमरी सोर्स ढूंढना वहाँ फिर उस तो बाद अगे आना वहाँ आओ मैं तो अंदर खाना वहाँ कि किस तरीके ना पर्शियन व्हील वेल जड़ा सी ऑपरेट होना सी लकड़ी दे बिचुला सी जड़ा के थाउजेंड इयर्स गो वाला खू है वो ही खू मेरे बस दे खू पंजाब दे मैं अक्सर कहना माँ मेरे खू ऐ देखो, ऐ वो जिधा पुराना जिधा एंशिएंट जिधा चक्के उधा वो वाला हेले भी चल रहा है, उसे तरह ही चल रहा है जिस तरह के 2500 इयर्स इगो भी तो याद दिन दर जड़िए ऐ चीज चल रही थी, वो ही चीज जड़िए, सिर्फ फर्क कहना है कि ऑक्स दी जगह, बल दी जगह और दान दी जगह देते, जिधा वो असी � क्योंकि हर कार दिन इच अब बल्ब जरा मौजूद नहीं होंगा और ऐसा ऐसा सेम रहने के लिए ऐ देखो ऐ देखो ऐ वही मिट्टी दिया टिंडा ने जड़ियां के मैं तो अनु दस्य ऐसी कि मिट्टी दिया टिंडा जड़ियां ने साढे पंजाब दिन इच आज भी मौजूद ने और वो किस तरीके ना ऑपरेट होंगे दिया ने वो तुष्य देख लो मॉडर्न खू मॉडर्न मोटर हैं ऐ देखो तुष्य कुछ लोग कहने ने कि नॉर्थवेस्ट पंजाब यहाँ 
ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨੀ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਨੇ ਤਰੱਕੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਕੀਤੀ ਤਰੱਕੀ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਕੁਝ ਲੋਕ ਆਪਣੇ ਕਲਚਰ ਐਂਡ ਹੈਰੀਟੇਜ ਨੂੰ ਛੱਡਣ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਤਿਆਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਉਸ ਦਾ ਮਕਸਦ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਿ ਤਰੱਕੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੋਈ ਐ ਦੇਖੋ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਨਾਲ ਸੇਮ ਟਾਈਮ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਮੋਟਰ ਵੀ ਲੱਗੀ ਹੋਈ ਹੈ ਪੀਟਰ ਇੰਜਨ ਵੀ ਪਿਆ ਹੋਇਆ ਛੋਟਾ ਜਿਹਾ ਐ ਦੇਖੋ ਇਸ ਨੂੰ ਵੀ ਚਲਾਇਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਇਹਦੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਮੰਗ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਆਪਣੀ ਜਗ੍ਹਾ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਇੱਕ ਖੂਹ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਦੇਖੋ ਕਿ ਟ੍ਰੈਡੀਸ਼ਨਲੀ ਜਿਹੜਾ 1000 ਇਅਰਸ ਗੋ ਤੋਂ ਚੱਲਣ ਵਾਲਾ ਖੂਹ ਹੈ ਟਿੰਡਾਂ ਵਾਲਾ ਖੂਹ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਚੱਲਦਾ ਪਿਆ ਔਰ ਦੂਸਰੇ ਪਾਸੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਦੇਖੋ ਕਿ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਮਾਡਰਨ ਮੋਟਰ ਵੀ ਨਜ਼ਰ ਆ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਇਸ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਕਮੀ ਸੋਰਸਿਸ ਦੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਜਾਂ ਕੁਝ ਵੀ ਮੈਂ ਸਿਰਫ ਇਹੀ ਕਹਿ ਰਿਹਾ ਹਾਂ ਕਿ ਮੈਂ ਬਾਰ ਬਾਰ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਕਹਿਣਾ ਹਾਂ ਕਿ ਸਾਡੇ ਲੋਕ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਨੇ ਕਲਚਰ ਐਂਡ ਹੈਰੀਟੇਜ ਨੂੰ ਛੱਡਣ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਤਿਆਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਔਰ ਖਾਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਇਲਾਕਾ ਕਲਚਰ ਐਂਡ ਹੈਰੀਟੇਜ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਤੇ ਇੰਨਾ ਪਪੂਲਰ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਜਿੰਨੀ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਸੋਚ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਉਹੀ ਐਂਸ਼ੀਅਨਟ ਪੋਰਸ ਸਟੋਨ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਬਣਿਆ ਹੋਇਆ ਹੈ ਵੇਖੋ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਪੋਰਸ ਸਟੋਨ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਬਣੇ ਹੋਏ ਖੂਨ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਦੇਖੋ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਇਹ ਮਿੱਟੀ ਦੀਆਂ ਟਿੰਡਾਂ ਕਿਸ ਤਰੀਕੇ ਨਾਲ ਜਾਂਦੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਔਰ ਇਹ ਫਿਲ ਹੋ ਕੇ ਵਾਪਸ ਆ ਰਹੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਮੇਰੀ ਰਿਸਰਚ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੈ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਔਰ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲੀ ਨਾਰਥ ਵੈਸਟ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨ ਦੇ ਅੰਦਰ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਸੋ ਮੈਂ ਉਹ ਚੀਜ਼ਾਂ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਆਣਾ ਵਾਂ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਕਿ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੇ ਨਾ ਵਿਖਾਈਆਂ ਹੋਣੀਆਂ ਮੇਰਾ ਦਾਵਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਟਿੰਡਾ ਵਾਲਾ ਖੂਹ ਜੁੜਾ ਹੈ ਟਿੰਡਾ ਵਾਲਾ ਖੂਹ ਜਿਹਨੂੰ ਕਿਹਾ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਸੀ ਉਹ origignal form ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਅੱਜ ਮੈਂ ਪਹਿਲੀ ਵਾਰੀ ਦਿਖਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਹਾਂ ਹਾਂ ਕਿਸ ਜਗ੍ਹਾ ਬਲੋਚਿਸਤਾਨ ਦੇ ਅੰਦਰ ਸ਼ਾਇਦ ਕੁਝ ਐਸੇ ਟਿੰਡਾ ਵਾਲੇ ਖੂਹ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਨੇ ਮੌਜੂਦ ਹੋਣ ਔਰ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਹਲੇ ਤੱਕ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦਾ ਕੋਈ ਕਲਚਰ ਬਾਕੀ ਹੋਏਗਾ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨ ਦੇ ਬਾਕੀ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਮਾਡਰਨ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਹੈ ਉਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੇ ਚੀਜ਼ਾਂ ਨਾ ਨਾ ਪੈਦ ਨੇ ਐਸ ਵੇਲੇ ਸਿਰਫ ਇਹ ਜ਼ਿਲ੍ਹਾ ਅਟਕ ਹੈ ਔਰ ਫਤਿਹ ਜੰਗ ਤੋਂ ਪਿੰਡੀ ਗੇ ਬਾਂਦੇ ਹੋਏ ਆ ਅਗਰ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਆਓ ਤੇ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਮੁxtਲਿਫ ਜਗ੍ਹਾ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਇਹੋ ਜਿਹਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕਲਚਰ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਦੇਖਣ ਨੂੰ ਮਿਲੇਗਾ ਔਰ ਲੋਕ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਨੇ ਆਪਣੀ ਸਕਾਫਤ ਨਾਲ ਜੁੜੇ ਹੋਏ ਔਰ ਆਪਣੇ ਵਿਰਸੇ ਨੂੰ ਕਦੀ ਨਾ ਖਤਮ ਹੋਣ ਦੇਣ ਵਾਲੇ ਨੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਦੇਖੋ ਕਿ ਮੈਂ ਇਹਨੂੰ ਐਂਸ਼ੀਅਨਟ ਕਿਉਂ ਕਹਿ ਰਿਹਾ ਐਂਸ਼ੀਅਨਟ ਦੇਖੋ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਇਹਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਚੱਕਾ ਹੈ ਪਿਓਰ ਵੁੱਡ ਦਾ ਹੈ ਠੀਕ ਹੈ ਜੀ ਇਹ ਵੀ ਵੁੱਡ ਹੈ ਔਰ ਇਹ ਦੇਖੋ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਪਰਸ਼ੀਅਨ ਐਂਸ਼ੀਅਨਟ ਵੀਲ ਵੈਲ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕਿ ਅੱਜ ਤੋਂ 100 ਸਾਲ ਪੁਰਾਣੀ ਇੱਕ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਸੀ ਬ੍ਰਿਟਿਸ਼ ਦੀ ਲਾਹੌਰ ਦੇ ਗਿਰ ਵਗਦੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਖੂਹ ਸਨ 100 ਸਾਲ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਉਹ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦਾ ਚੱਕੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਤੇ ਚੱਲ ਰਹੇ ਸੀ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਐਸੇ ਲਾਕੇ ਹੀ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਦੇਖੋ ਅੱਜ ਵੀ ਉਹ ਖੂਹ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਮੌਜੂਦ ਨੇ ਔਰ ਕਿਸ ਤਰੀਕੇ ਨਾਲ ਇਹ ਵਰਕ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਔਰ ਐਸ ਐਦੇ ਦੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਦੇਖੋ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਆਇਰਨ ਦਾ ਯੂਜ਼ ਬਹੁਤ ਕਮ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਇਹ ਦੇਖੋ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਉਹ ਵੁਡਨ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਆ ਦੇਖੋ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਉਹ ਵੁਡਨ ਚੱਕਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਉਹ ਚੱਲ ਰਿਹਾ ਨਾਲ ਨਾਲ ਮੈਂ ਹਾਂ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਆਪਣਾ ਹੋਸਟ ਵਾਵਾ ਜੀ ਔਰ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਦੇਖ ਰਹੇ ਹੋ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਕਲਚਰ ਐਂਡ ਹੈਰੀਟੇਜ ਔਰ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਕਲਚਰ ਹੈਰੀਟੇਜ ਨੂੰ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਅੱਜ ਮੈਂ ਨਾਰਥ ਵੈਸਟ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਇਆ ਹਾਂ ਤਾਂ ਵਿਖਦੇ ਰਹੋ ਫਿਰ ਸੇਵ ਹਿਸਟੋਰੀਕਲ ਪਲੇਸਿਸ ਆਫ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨ ਸੇਵ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰਾ ਐਂਡ ਟੈਂਪਲਸ ਆਫ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਪੇਜ ਕਲਚਰ ਐਂਡ ਹੈਰੀਟੇਜ ਆਫ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਔਰ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਕਲਚਰ ਐਂਡ ਹੈਰੀਟੇਜ ਉਸ
and uh, it's a first millennium BC invention in Persia. So, uh, you can see a Kwanath, the picture of a Kwanath right here at the right hand side of the slide. So, like uh, you can see a series of uh, well like vertical shafts, these are the vertical shafts uh, connected by gently sloping tunnels. So, they, they are all connected to each other. So, these shafts they are connected to each other by the gently uh, sloping tunnels and uh, this was very important uh, in terms of delivery of subterranean water to the surface. And what the most important thing about Kwanath is that it can uh, it could deliver or it can deliver subterranean water to the surface without the need for pumping. So, it saves energy. So, you do not require a pump and uh, easily you know water uh, can be collected from the uh, subterranean uh, surface to the uh, uh, to the surface level uh, without any uh, pumping without. So, it is not energy intensive at all. Uh, so, how the water gets drained? The water drains through gravity. So, it drains through gravity uh, uh, and water is collected from the upland aquifer and then it gets easily uh, drained through gravity. And this system, this extensive system, uh, uh, it was very significant for uh, uh, desert areas like you know uh, Iran, Asia, parts of North Africa. Uh, so, uh, till now you know Kwanats are uh, in use, but of course, the number uh, have numbers have reduced. And, uh, Uh, finally, like uh, Kwanats were also used in the northwest frontier province uh, and the use of Kwanats became uh, very uh, prominent uh, during the medieval rule in India. Yeah. So, this is an interesting uh, illustration relating to the diffusion of uh, this particular technology Kwanats. So, uh, so, you can see that uh, it, uh, it is known, uh, uh, known by various names. Uh, so, in Spain it is called Galeria, I really do not know how to pronounce it. Uh, in Jordan, Syria it is Kwanath Romani, in China it is Kanjaring, uh, Persia Kariz, Afghanistan, Pakistan. So, Pakistan you can understand, so it was part uh, uh, of the northwest frontier province. So, now it has gone to Pakistan, but definitely it was um, you know, within India uh, during the medieval times. So, in Pakistan also uh, it is called both Kwanath and Kariz, North Africa, Fogara and all that. So, you can see very interestingly that uh, the uh, Kwanath technology it also uh, went up till uh, America, it went up to uh, America uh, through Spanish colonization. So, the Mediterranean Spain, uh, uh, I mean in Spain this uh, particular technology was prevalent because Spain uh, got to know about Kwanath through Arab expansion. So, Arab expansion then Spanish colonization in America. So, so you can see the chain through which uh, this particular technology it traveled across different parts of the world. So, it is a very successful uh, water technology device. Yeah, so I'll just like to end this presentation uh, with a particular question in mind, and I really think that you know the uh, students or people or researchers they really need to uh, evoke uh, an understanding or a particular question in mind that you know often in our school textbooks or often uh, in some of the conventional uh, works or literature. Muslim rule or Islamic rule is depicted as the dark age, right? And uh, this depiction it comes from the imperial school of thought or the imperial historians, you know, uh, people like Moreland or people like Stanley Lane Poole or for that matter, people like Vincent Smith and Mill. So they try to, uh, to a great extent, uh, stigmatize uh, and victimize the medieval period as the uh, you know period of dark age. So, there was no development, the society was extremely stagnant, it was a static society with no economic development, no I mean there was no scope and no opportunity for economic regeneration. And even uh, Karl Marx, he uh, talked about the Asiatic mode of production. 
So, which was very different from the uh, other uh, continents, because uh, he also talked about uh, the, uh, you know, the, the uh, how, how stagnant uh, the society was uh, during this particular point of time. But later also, uh, he tried to revise uh, his, uh, you know, uh, previously uh, chalked out theories. And Irfan Habib, as I talked about Irfan Habib in the previous lecture, so who is a very renowned historian uh, on, uh, especially the Mughal rule or on medieval India, an economic historian. So he um, had uh, written a lot on, you know, the various uh, theories or frameworks relating to the Asiatic mode of production, and he has also countered uh, some of the uh, arguments uh, propounded by Marx uh, and uh, he tried to validate his own particular point or hypothesis by showing that the medieval uh, period or medieval India, the society was not at all stagnant or static. It was rather extremely dynamic. So, so whether should we regard these Muslim rulers as proselytizers who only came here to loot and plunder and you know, convert and all that, autocrats, destroyers of Indian civilization or we should critically interrogate this uh, uh, conceptualization of dark age and try to find out facts and evidences that actually provides us with an alternative history that shows how you know medieval India also was very much you know the society was technologically advanced and the society was dynamic. And if you remember, um, you know, um, a particular quote from the previous lecture where we talked about, uh, uh, you know, where Abba Khan uh, who had worked on Haryana, he said that, you know, the water technologies, at least it shows, uh, I mean, this, this manifests or this reflect the kind of uh, sophistication or the kind of sophistication that India uh, could reach in terms of science and technology uh, is actually uh, incredible. So, uh, so we need to keep this mind that uh, they really, I mean there was the construction and implementation of various sophisticated extensive and elaborate water technologies during the medieval time which were very much tuned to ecological and geographical settings and specific contexts. So, with this I would just like to say that uh, you can go through this uh, various references which will be again important for you to uh, you know for, for uh, capturing uh, uh, detailed coverage on uh, Islamic technologies or more specifically I mean Islamic technology in general uh, uh, across the world and also Islamic technologies more specifically uh, for India. Uh, thank you.